Hello, this is Blah6. It's day two of E3 2019. I'm here with Fan, Mad, and Umbreon, and we are here to react to the PC Gaming Show. <sighs> Hello. I uh, don't know how long Hello. I might be in here, to be honest. Maybe now, because there might be a chance my brother just may have come. And yeah, my brother just came in, so. Rip. All right, later. Now it's just, that's nah, just fan and mad. I'm gonna be completely okay. honest here. Um, the PC gaming show most years is usually just uh, cringe mixed with semi-interesting PC games getting uh, on Steam and possibly Nintendo Switch as well. But it's just. <laughs> I never look forward to this one. Like this one, even though uh, even though most even though stuff like uh, Bethesda, uh, sometimes Square, and most of the time Ubisoft are just cringe. This is cringe mixed with boredom, and sometimes an interesting game or two. So of interesting games. I was told Terraria would be here. So yeah, like how we were told Banjo was at Microsoft. Well, at least gives me a reason to watch. Yeah, I just hope that I don't know. Maybe like there's a, I don't know. Maybe a PC port of a game I like, but other than that, I can't really think of anything. So I'll basically be in riffing mode most of the time. Mm. All right, one minute to show time. I got my tortilla chips here, and I'm all ready. All right, let's do this. He's scared of everything! Spiders! Snakes! Wicker furniture! R R R R. Ten seconds! Ah, ah, ah. Oh. And here we go. This is the PC Gaming Show, a celebration of the most vibrant gaming platform. For the next two hours, you'll see all new two hours? trailers and interviews. Taking the stage today are first gameplay footage for Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines 2, Borderlands 3. Of course. The reveal of Evil Genius 2, Starmancer. Okay. I Last am a few Oasis. seconds behind. Two new games That's okay, Oasis you're not missing studios. much. Lands. Oh yeah, Ubisoft at four, Zero. right? What's next for Terraria? Oh look, you were right, Terraria is here. Mosaic. So since this thing ends at three, I might need to actually immediately leave um after this uh, show is over, so that way I can go get some food and we can prepare for Ubisoft. <laughs> okay. And more. And now your PC gaming show okay, hosts, me. Day Nine and Frankie Ward. I can't believe it's so close to each other. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. I mean, even though it's an hour, I'll still need to go over there get to the PC gaming show. Yeah. Yes! We're so happy you're here today. We have a great show for you lined up. We got 30 games that we're going to be showing off. 30! Some of them will be updates to existing franchises and titles. Others will be exclusive world first looks. Crunch. Y'all ready? Crunch. Well, I first want to what? thank our sponsors for helping make this event possible. Without Crunch. their support, this event saying. would not happen each year. So thank you so much. Thanks to you for coming out. It's 10 a.m. in Los Angeles. Happy Monday, everyone. 
Best day of the week. Hello to all of you Shut up, up in the Skillshare. balcony. And of course, thanks to you tuning oh, in live from all over the internet, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're tuning so, in from. So welcome. what are you doing? We're happy to have you. My name is Day9. I'm one of your hosts for this event. Joining me is the fantastic Frankie Ward. Hello. Um, I think the streams uh, work. I think um, the skills, I mean, the screen now, share is working okay for, for me. you guys at home, for the first time, whatever platform you're watching on, we are going to be pulling your clever comments. Just, just remember that I said clever comments from Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook throughout the show, making you famous on the internet, on the screen. We're going to be sharing them live. And one of the things we're especially looking for are your questions for the Borderlands 3 team, because, Sean, you've got a mission to put their questions to the developers later. That's right. Midway through this show, okay, I'm going to I cannot hear a question thing over the that crunching. of Borderlands 3. Use hashtag PC Gaming Show, and we'll read them live. How about now? Until then, let's start the PC Gaming Show with our very first title from UK developer Rebellion. I'm going to mute myself ago, until there's something interesting, the okay? To Evil Genius, a real-time okay. evil mm. layer simulator. And now, Rebellion is ready to reveal its nefarious vision for the project. So, PC Gaming Show, who's ready to stroke a cat menacingly? Here is the world is free to reveal for Evil Genius 2 World Domination. Interesting. Yeah, admittedly, it looks okay. Yeah. All right, kind of silly. Ugh. Excuse me. Soda and Kara Ellison from Hard Suit Labs. Now, Brian, you were a writer on the very first game, so what does it mean to you to finally get to work on the sequel? Um, it means that uh, a lot of people have uh, very high expectations and we have to meet those. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's take a look at whether you are going to meet them because we are going to take a look at the world's first gameplay footage. I guess I have to be the one to tell you. You're dead. You're obviously new to this whole existence, but truth is, most of you types won't even make it a whole year. Oh, great. I can't mute the crunching without rule. muting the feet. You don't break the masquerade. Almost done. Don't worry. Don't. It's okay. Okay, I'm done. No more snacks, I promise. We're all fighting over oh yeah, course. speaking of snacks, it's time for some blood. Welcome to the first day of the rest of your death. Having fun yet? Bye -bye. I have a chance of hearing this. Wait, wasn't that the game Merrick? I think I remember that from last year. Guys, what does it mean to be a vampire in this world? Uh, so in, uh, it means you're the, emo uh, and what, wear what black and look like a white guy. Oh, come on! 
and the vampires kind of uh, <coughs> keep their presence secret from humanity. So the vampires are kind of uh, staying hidden in the shadows while also needing to feed on human beings and kind of manipulating us uh, in order to get blood. We're talking about feeding on human beings. Oh, that's how it works. Years, that's interesting. So. Cara, it's not just a case, though, of, of sucking blood and filling up your health meter, is it? Actually, different types of blood do different things. That's right. So we have the uh, resonance system, which means that essentially vampires uh, can kind of like, like uh, see the emotional resonance of human beings. Uh, like fear or uh, desire, and then they can uh, they can feed on those people to like feel the same things as human beings do to feel more kind of alive, and um, that can give you like extra boost in the game. And there were some really interesting characters in that trailer as well. What kind of relationships are we going to be forming with them as the player? Well, very uh, fragile, very volatile relationships, very mature rela relationships. So it's going to be a fun time. Yeah, not for you I'm kids here playing PC what games. What I'm learning about this game is you don't just get bitten and turn into Nosferatu, Dracula, or Brad Pitt. And to be honest, I think you should maybe put Brad Pitt. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm definitely playing it. You actually have to adjust to your environment to becoming a vampire, Zara. Right? That's right. So essentially, in the game, uh, when you were made as a vampire, a uh, sort, of, uh, sort of very young vampire, a lot of other vampires are made at the same time um, in this thing called the mass embrace. And that means that um, essentially uh, they're having a less lucky time than you in the world. You're having a relatively good time compared to them because they don't know what they're doing. They're going through vampire puberty uh, on their own. And you know, you might have a family. <sighs> say, uh, a wife and children, and you are morally objecting to drinking blood uh, to survive. I'm morally so objecting to this already. Time, let's say, than the player is having. So you can find them throughout the world as well. And Brian, the first game came out in 2004. You've been waiting Well, yeah, this one doesn't really interest me, so. Any pressure? Uh, yeah, tons I of mean, things. if it didn't but, look uh, so much like yeah, we're, um, we're Deus Ex Twilight, well, then you know, I would I not be opposed. Watching this, and of course, the audience here, and they all can't wait to play this game. Can you no offense guys? to Deus Ex, it's just that. So I think, you've convinced I think that atmosphere along with the vampire game does not fit. Uh, we're going uh, Q1 uh, next year. Fantastic. Could you guys Thank just you fuck London. off stage? Thank you so much, Brian and Kara. Good luck. No. Give it up. Guys. Hey, oh, right. I don't think I worded that now, right. Have you ever wanted to play Dwarf Fortress in space? Starmancer is a space station sim from Omanux Games and Chucklefish. After a catastrophe on Earth, humanity... Butcher fish for life fish. ...refuge among the stars. Your task is to play manage a colony capable of sustaining space? life, crafting components... I, I heard fish in space. ...sending out crews to mine asteroids. But when you're living in space, there can be big consequences for even the smallest mistakes. Ooh, tomorrow's Let's gonna be amazing. Hopefully. Yep. <laughs> hey, there's been a glitch! Oh. Okay. Okay, another base building game? I mean, I honestly would rather play the Fallout one, but... Well, but this one's a little more customizable than Shelter, and I don't even know what the fuck the, uh, the Overseer thing for 76 is. Yeah. You think you can stop me? <laughs> oh, you gotta train up the mercenaries. Or... <coughs> Better yet, call Samus. Well, uh, we want the space station intact at the end. That's a good point. Starman, sir. If we get Samus, Our it's just gonna blow up. Both started as modders. 
for now, modders for what? Each independently run their modders for what? Let's welcome to the stage from Tripwire, John Gibson, and from Torn Banner, Steve Piggott. Oh, excuse hey, me, I'm going to go and uh, hug Dash and hope to God this goes away. Now I understand. So if you started as modders, working independently, uh, running your own studios, what, talk to me about the collaboration that you started together. Yeah, Steve, so uh, we've known the Torn Banner guys for a long time, uh, even giving them some advice when they were modders going commercial, helping them not make the mistakes that we made. And uh, we've been friends, and we always wanted to work together. And now we've sort of formed this independent former mod team professional super group to get an awesome game out to fans. Yeah, and for us, this is a great <laughs> partnership as well. Um, we've always been really close with Tripwire, and we really respect so, their So, what plushies um, of ponies do you guys have? That's bringing true innovation to the FPS genre, and that's what we're all about as well. Well, let's take a look at this upcoming Awkward collaboration silent. between Torn Banner and Tripwire. I mean, let's be honest here. I'm pretty sure what they're going to show off next will warn us to try and uh, talk about that instead of this. I mean, they'd have to do a lot. Oh, look! It's another one of these games. I mean, I mean, look, it, it's basically that one game, like, uh, I forget what it was called. Was it called Vengeance or something? Or Chivalry or whatever. Yeah, 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 that's what I think. Yeah, you, you know the game I'm talking about. Yeah, so what's your favorite pony, guys? Or what plushies do you have of them? I don't really have plushies. It's Chivalry 2! Wait. Chivalry... Wait, wait. Wait, huh? It's literally just Chivalry 2. Oh. Oh, you, you were just talking that there was like... It was like tall... It was like Chivalry? Boom! Chivalry 2! favorite medieval movie battle scenes. And our, our flagship game mode, Team of Quick, Objectives, does about that Half too. by having players complete... Uh, it's like still not here yet? Castles, raiding villages... Oh wait, no, that was Half-Life 3. Uh, I think it's Half-Life 3. And, yeah, you're, really, um, you're not just... Going two comes before three. Area ...and then a bar fills up. You're, like you said, burning houses... Yeah. Well, you said something about peasants. Chivalry, and then Chivalry 2 was... You know, yeah. <laughs> No, 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 say something about Portal. Really about letting the player experience every say something about Paper Mario, damn it! And on top of that, we've, we've, this time around, we've, no, no, Portal. Portal's more appropriate because it's Steam and, two and, a half and times PC and shit. Yeah. 64 players. And on top of that, um, that, 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 courses, that, that those, those dots really look an awful lot like Portals. ...to the game and bring experiences like the Battle of the I like the Space Core. ...from Game of Thrones. Space, Don't worry, we'll space, ignore the last season. Oh, look, 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 look. It looks like uh, one of the core <laughs> eye things. Like, look. The sword play element to Chivalry 2. I mean, I know it's a really critical. Look, element. they look like the core eyes from yeah, a portal. Time around, we've completely revamped. I mean, we really yep. view what we're doing here as. Okay, see. Okay, okay, we made a connection. Good. Yeah, we've <laughs> that means Portal 3 is finally getting an ass. <laughs> movement and animation <laughs> so that. I or, I don't know, maybe like Portal 1 action, and 2 are remastered. Feels readable uh, and fair. This is the plot. Would I kill you? Of the, and the weight that you would expect. Chapter 9, the, the part where I kill you. Full armor <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, it's very, Hello, very this is the part where I kill you. Much more accessible than the previous game. Oh, someone's, you know, no, someone's, no, no, someone's the, the the so you. much quicker. It was what I really enjoy when... Hello, this is the part where I kill you. About the fluidity. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, I got a giant Lapras, um, from GameStop. It's really... It's pretty big, um... The sword play operates differently than that. Yeah, we kind of think of it like when you're swimming, where you're kind of constantly using bubbles at the same time. And My heat sweeper battle uh, royale. Part of our focus this time around has been making it so that players can fight multiple opponents at come the on. same time. Like one on three, one on four. Come on, go. Exactly, because that's fundamentally part of the... the I don't have time. The hey, if Cetris can get a battle royale, and, uh, why not my sweeper? Well, I mean, I do have to ask, we're talking about swordplay and mastery, but... The original chivalry, I mean, it's kind of like silly fun. Like, how do you balance that? Wait a second, it's cold. Yeah, our on. goal has always been to make it so that players can take the game as seriously as they want to and also as silly as they want to. Um, we know that probably about half our audience plays the game drunk, uh, and we love that. Um, <laughs> at, at least half. Yeah. <laughs> That's an important metric to track. And the game has a huge influence from Monty Python as well. I mean, in the over the Anyone top Anyone else taking finals right now? Opportunities. I mean, the game is genuinely hilarious. 
As an example, you can beat a man with a chicken while quoting Shakespeare. Like, so like picking up a chicken as a yeah, weapon, physically that's a mechanic. Him to death with well, chicken. that's yeah. excellent. Well, I mean, I have to ask. Farming Simulator, Battle Royale. On Chivalry 2. So Chivalry 2 is coming out. Did I miss uh, anything? Early 2020. And it's coming. Uh, yeah, just a comment on the board. bottom. Oh, look forward Keanu to for it Smash. Out early 2020. Gentlemen, <laughs> oh, oh, I. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you so much. Anything to get away from this shit. We are just getting started here at the PC Gaming Show. Let's take a look at what's coming up next. I mean... You're watching the PC Gaming Show. Better not be an ad. Coming up. Coming up. Build a world for ad. wildlife in Planet Zoo. Oh, a sequel to Planet Coaster. Climbers, remnant from the ashes. No wonder Planet Coaster's on sale right now. And more trailers, Wait, Zoo Tycoon? And gameplay footage. Sort of. I guess you can think of it like Zoo Tycoon mixed with uh, Steam Workshop. Okay. Okay, the fuck is this? Ooh, my stomach. Okay, I'm sitting upright. Ugh. Is it a new clicker? <sighs> Mosaic. Ugh. Oh, and Blue Plop's out now, right now. Oh, there is a new clicker. That was a brand new trailer for Mosaic, a dark and atmospheric adventure game coming later this year from developer Killbite and publisher Raw Fury. So how are you guys enjoying it so far? There's been some swords, some space stations, vampire puberty. We're listening to your reactions to the PC Gaming Show throughout the entire broadcast, no matter what platform you're watching. And that line right, right there, Vampire Puberty, is the and reason why I don't like this show. Or don't really Pokemon. have any interest. Proton packs and get ready for Midnight Ghost Hunt. World exclusive. World premiere. Sorry, people on Mars. When Ooh, coffee stain. Falls, Got a coffee stain right here. Oh, I can't get it out now. We were almost a Jill when sandwich. Mansion looked like Spencer Mansion, actually. You can count on me. Hey, look, it's the discount Ghostbusters. Yeah, you see? Yeah, I see it. Okay, one of them just be like a goat. Yeah, it's legit. Just because just why not? Got a big surprise for you. Oh, it's even worse than Ghostbusters could ever have been. But what do you mean? You get to play as the ghost thing. You can easily do that in a Ghostbusters game. You can fucking play as Slimer if need be. <laughs> what? It's Prop Hunt. Yeah. It's Prop Hunt? It's a G-Mod. It's a G-Mod game. Oh. Also, yeah, they're ripping yeah, off G-Mod now, huh? You fucks. Okay, so no one's on stage, Joining thank you. Oh, of course! <laughs> of course! You get off stage, you bring me back in! Team. Creative director, programmer, designer, it's Sam Malone! Sam Malone! I don't care. <laughs> Please tell us what is going on in that. What is Midnight Ghost Hunt all about? 
So Midnight Ghost Hunt is a multiplayer ghost hunting. So what games have you guys been playing recently? Or ghost hunting, like a four v four format. I see. Uh, well, I've been playing through Paper Mario again. Oh, thank God, a good game. The goal is to look like harmless furniture, uh, but on the inside, they're not so harmless ghosts as you saw. Yeah, and if I'm understanding correctly, oh, it's sorry. About sorry. What'd you say? Lamp to try to assault and take out a hunter, it's actually, you would do that so that way you can Hello? keep running away and continue to hide. Exactly. Hello. So the main objective of the Sorry about that. Uh, I got cut off for some reason. They can until the time runs out, until the clock strikes midnight. Can you hear me? Midnight being kind of the uh, Yeah, we can hear you. Ghosts. Okay. Uh, so yeah, yeah, so, uh, which paper Mario? But in general, uh, you the know, first one. Try to hide, uh, yeah. Um, kind of you know what I want to see? I want to see a remaster of that using color splash. See. Visuals well, like the like that's probably the old one of the, the only good things about that game. What are the hunters doing? So the hunters, it kind of. I don't know. I don't think it really needs a graphical update. The first part of the game is kind of almost like a detective game. If it's game, basically you know, exactly the same game, uh, like uh, really like uh, gameplay wise, but the, so the graphics were better, then that would be amazing. Like you saw, to try to narrow down where in the haunted house these ghosts are hiding, basically. Uh, as soon as the first ghost is found, yeah. though, it starts getting a bit more. Yeah, sure, better graphics uh, are nice. Flying everywhere, but and they have that yeah, and, yeah, and, and like, like, think about it. Re-released on this, kind of released on the Switch well, uh, for that. I'm pretty sure it would fucking outsell so goddamn Mario Tennis Aces. Mod mod called Prop Hunt. Right. So uh, that's definitely a big inspiration. Probably. The big twist for us is that the props Probably. are fighting back. You saw the furniture. They Hell, make it a double pack, pack with Thousand Year Door, and you'd be printing so money. It becomes like this action hide and seek sort of mashup. No, no, uh, no you don't. Have a reason to be a little bit make it a three pack of, uh, with Super Paper Mario. That you're hunting. So that's yes. Dynamic again. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, about when the clock yeah, actually, that would work. Midnight. We saw the very spooky red color pop up. You'll get the full trilogy in. Yeah, the good trilogy. So midnight, if even the one with the the four minutes into the match. The uh, uh, beginning of it all, the best shot, one, shot, and the all best the story. Flicker out, it'll get really dark and scary, and all the ghosts that were destroyed actually return as vengeful spirits. Okay, so the beginning of it all, the best one, and Thousand Year Door? So at this point, no, 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 uh, the beginning, turned, the best the one of them all in Super Paper Mario. They just need to try to work together to uh, stay alive long enough for their evac to come, which is another four minutes or so. Usually wow. the ghosts win. Like, when I will win, like, fully say, say that, that the game? best yeah, story yeah, belongs to Super, right, but everything win else win belongs to Thousand Year Door. By destroying all right, right. the ghosts and clearing the house, basically. Well, awesome. The gameplay. I, I kind of prefer Midnight Super a bit so more. Running an alpha event mm. later this summer. Uh, you can sign up at Midnight Ghost. <sighs> uh, maybe that's just me. Like it's okay. As long as all three would get remastered, I would not. I would not complain a bit. Summer, we'll be giving out keys. Unless the remasters were shit. Well, wonderful, ladies and gentlemen, Sam Malone, from Vaulted Sky Games. Yeah, the fact that we're talking about Nintendo at a PC conference just goes to show yeah, how uninteresting Frankie this is. Up in the is. balcony, and if I understand correctly, Frankie, this Wait, is they didn't talk about prop hunting. You do the game? understand correctly, Sean? Yes, it's a big sequel to a small indie game. Unexplored 2 is a procedural adventure, a roguelike that challenges you to fight. No, they moved on. And to solve its mysteries. Explore a beautiful world, engage with its creatures, and befriend huh? its people. Search for magic well, now what? <coughs> until you die. Now what? And die again. This is Unexplored 2. Hmm? Big sugar. Hmm, this looks interesting. Well, it looks interesting, at least. Kinda reminds me of Adventure Time, in a way. With the art style? Yeah.
good point. Why was... Alright, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Excuse me. <laughs> Unexplored 2, The Wayfarer's Legacy. One of the biggest bang for your buck that you can get when building a new rig is investing in a new monitor. And here to talk about a groundbreaking new display is Samsung's Dean Dalsera. Welcome, Dean. What you got for us? Today we're here to announce the Samsung C27 RG5 Curve Gaming Monitor. Well, let's take a look. Okay, a new monitor. And right, now what's going on? What happened? New monitor. I need a new monitor. Oh. Uh. Well, I guess I didn't miss much then. Dean, we've seen the video. Yeah. Um, I gotta start asking. Talk to me about some of those. Meanwhile, I just features. have my PC so it's hooked up to my TV. Curved gaming panel. We believe it's a world first, so you have lag-free and tear-free performance. Um, and we think that the, the curve is going to be a very immersive experience what? you wouldn't get from a t traditional flat panel. And I wanted to ask I thought it was like just a quick ad for like the mod that helped me game there for the upcoming game they're talking about. Nope, they're still showing for the goddamn monitor. Oh yeah. This is why I fucking hate this. I saw that flash up on the screen as well. G-Sync compatible monitor, so we're so Okay, so anyway, favorite chapter is Paper Mario. Oh, okay. Um, let me see. Uh, I would say, um, Shy Guy's Toy Box in the original. Uh, Rock, um, the wrestling one, uh, chapter three in Thousand Year Door, and chapter seven in in Super Paper Mario. So it'll be available in mid-July for under four hundred dollars. Uh, for a 27 inch panel. Yeah, I'm actually so inclined to agree with you on that one. Up to oh. eight miles, yeah. However, because when you said 400, I mean, that's the 27 inch. I kind of prefer right the bit lands in Super. Yeah, so our gaming line will be expanded to eight models, range from oh, okay. all the way up Just for the whole aesthetic. QHD Fair model. enough. Uh, check out samsung.com slash gaming240. I got an email. Like, yeah, that's right. I for can't even answer there. it. You can go there for it. But Is it from X? Is 4K? No, no, it's from something else. Uh, you know what? Hold on. Well, I want to let you know that we have all sorts of great presentations and games coming up. Let's look at what's coming up in the PC Gaming Show. Stay tuned oh, for we got a new thing. Trailers at never before seen footage, a preview. including Gearbox answers burning questions about Borderlands 3. The next okay, Borderlands Gray Entertainment. Get ready to rip the galaxy a new wormhole in Valfaris and more. And now the PC Gaming Show presents What's Next from Funcom. Warm applause. Okay. Um, it's very exciting it for us to be here at the PC Gaming Show for the very first That's time 30 ever. 30% more bullet for bullet. And naturally, we would like to arr, show some of the arr, games arr, arr, arr. So, without further ado, here are some of the games coming for 2019. Something strange is going on. There's something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you gonna call PlayStation 4? <laughs> because uh, you know Ghostbusters, uh, the video game is being uh, remastered for PS4. Yeah. And yeah, Xbox, but not Nintendo Switch. Your skills. Not Nintendo Switch, oh, obviously. Specs, right? 
what happens to you happens Arr, to me. Because the rights of Ghostbusters are currently owned by Sony, and Sony doesn't like to play nice with others a lot. Hey, like how does that explain out. Microsoft? Uh, because because they they're not Nintendo. I think at this point, Sony doesn't really think of them as a threat. That's... I see. I guess they're still salty about the whole Phillips thing. Uh... So, no games for Nintendo. Anyway, um, let me see. Uh, My son, off to fly among the stars. Let me think. Uh, what other games do you want to see at Nintendo? Like, uh, I know I want to see a Pikmin one, two, and three with much better features. Uh, like, in fact, I actually have like. Several notes I wrote on the job about uh, Pikmin 1 to 3 uh, basically remastered. Yeah, Funcom, we have been doing our own like adding purple over, Pikmin, onion, purple and white Pikmin really onions to 2 and 3, making them actually able to be grown both in main story games. and at all. And on that note, I'd like Let's to see what else. Um, adding an uh, expert mode for Mighty Pikmin Kingdom, 1, a uh, or more accurately, a new game plus, where you keep all the upgrades that will be added in. Uh, and uh, be able to. Uh, so on April first this year, we put out a link uh, uh, just, for something called. The there are so many ideas and, uh, I had on that one job uh, that shift. Decided that that was uh, April Fool's joke. So uh, yeah, we have a little surprise for you. Check this out. Oh, I want to see something on Animal Crossing. Yeah, that yeah, we're probably seeing Animal Crossing at the very least, and Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. Rate of pending may contain inappropriate for children. No. Out. Conan. Definitely not real, but probably should. Oh, ha ha ha, funny. Oh. Zelda ish game. Looks kind of fun, actually. And all the characters inside look like they've been stolen from Sinai and Happiness. So basically, what you're telling me is that Castle Crashes is getting a sequel. Conan, chop chop. Oh, it's on Nintendo Switch, that's good. Okay. So there yeah. you have it, uh, Conan Chop Chop. It's a roguelike action adventure game. Uh, it's very real, and it's coming to PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch on September the 3rd this year. It's 2019. We also have a playable version here at E3 at our demo room, so if you want to give stick figure Conan a try, then please don't hesitate to drop by. Thank you. Thank you so much. <coughs> uh. Last Oasis is a nomadic survival game set in a post-apocalyptic post future where the Earth has stopped a post -post -apocalyptic. for post-apocalyptic. The last humans need to outrun the blazing sun in massive open world environments. Good times. But cheer up, sunshine. This is one of the most original-looking multiplayers we've seen, with interesting ideas underneath. A player-driven economy and some incredibly... Ever heard of Ask the Sonic Heroes? Heroes? Coming to Early Access on Steam on July 15th. Uh, the, the name sounds familiar. Access. Trust me, it's way better than this. My tribe built and actually funny. I'll uh, link you... Uh, we'll watch an episode uh, before uh, the Ubisoft conference a little later. Yeah, I'll pass, though. Oh, right, you're not doing Ubisoft, you're doing Nintendo, and that's it. Yeah. Fair enough. 
I just hope that there will be actual people watching the Ubisoft one today. You don't have to worry about removing you, I'll remove you instead. Like this! Just kidding. After this. You know it would be a really dick move of me? Removing you as soon as we get the Terraria. Yeah, that would be a dick move. Hey, well, joke's on you, because I've got the thing on the side. Ah, you've come prepared. For the dickery. Dickery, dickery, duck. I was looking at the donkey guy. Oh yeah, I changed my Xbox avatar icon thing to uh, the new Battletoads. Okay. Well, the new uh, rash uh, icon. Where bowl? You know, I want Nintendo to try and tackle one of these types of games, like these really tiring, uh, uh, these really uh, overdone games, just to see how they would spin it. Also, not on Switch, fuck you. Let's do a not on Switch counter on this thing. The name of the game is Age of Wonders Planetfall, a 4X strategy game. And joining me on the stage to talk about it is the game director, Leonard Sass, and principal gameplay developer, Tom Bird. Welcome, guys. Hi. Good to be here. Yeah, thanks. So, Leonard, just hmm. give us the gist of what Age of Wonders is You think a match on Smash sure. would uh, uh, eat up any bandwidth? A game where you play as one of the survivors of a shattered galactic empire. At the start of the game, yeah, you probably would create your own faction. Good point. Yeah, I'm include, not going to do uh, it then. The Vanguard Expeditionary Forces. What I will do. Everything went to hell. Um, there's scavenging cyborgs or the Amazon bioengineers who ride dinosaurs into battle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to ask because there's a pretty broad range we of are the pirates who Can don't do anything. Game I just want to start from the beginning of a game. What happens when you first land on the planet? Well, um, each race has their own spaceship. The spaceship comes down onto the planet. The planet is where the entire game takes place. Mm -hmm. And that spaceship will then transform into your capital colony, where your entire empire begins, your sort of attempt to take over the world. Around you, you've got a number of sectors. Oh, yeah, I have um, an amount of funds. I have $20. So maybe you'll Sweet. Find a genetic lab which is still full of right, what kind of deals we got? Entertainment complex overrun by horrible robot monsters. Look at all these games the that are not on PC, and I don't give a shit. <laughs> And I did see in the trailer dinosaurs with lasers, correct? Dinosaurs yeah. with lasers. Perfect. Well, I mean, Cats with lasers. Super blood no, hockey. No, cuts with lasers. I'm so sorry to disappoint all of you. <laughs> goat simulator, the goatee. You know, I saw the expansive tech tree show up in the game briefly. Harvest. And I know goat that simulator. Growing, resource in Texas. Yeah, I'm looking on Nintendo Switch's eShop. Right, so part of these tech trees come for your origin. Oh, yeah, that's on the sort Switch. Of represent the past of where you came huh? from. They include new units. Oh yeah, uh, new goat simulators on the units, Switch. Like jetpacks for yeah, yeah, I know. I just orbital just laser at my cannons phone. you can launch from space. Um, social doctrines okay. kind of all about war. Um, oh, night yeah. trap. Oh, that's uh, interesting. The part of your tech tree comes from your secret what, that game from the 90s? The future of your it's fashion. the 25th anniversary uh, so of night trap. Create, like a combination between man and machine, or man and computers. Yeah. Uh, others include oh, doomsday oh, technologies oh, that oh, allows oh, you to oh, infect oh, the entire population with alien brain-eating parasites or win the game by uh, splitting space time. I love how many details you're giving me of the horrors that await <laughs> on the planet. Uh, the future is not a pretty place. <laughs> well, I want to ask about some of the combat that we saw, because in a lot of strategy games, the combat can be very brief. It just you know, shows two armies pinging off each other. But I understand that the ding, tactical ding. layer is quite rich. Right, so when combat starts, Look, hang on. like on the world map, maybe like a little sort of space lab or something like that. 
When you combat, go into combat, you will zoom all the way in, and you will be inside the lab. You'll see all the pipes and all of the goops flowing around. Tori all of your two. units, which you've been putting together and built, are now deployed. In turn-based combat, you can move them into cover, use their abilities, shoot laser cannons. Maybe you've chosen the Dvar, so you've got like a bunch of space dwarves Man. in little yeah. metal suits that dig holes in the ground, like shoot from the, from the holes. Maybe you've chosen the Kirko, sort of horrible alien yeah. bug monsters. They run forwards and slash people and puke acid mm. on them, that kind of thing. I mean, how, how long do some of these battles wind up lasting? It depends. A short battle can be maybe. Uh, Dustin Lesion Tail is on the, the Nintendo game, Switch. Massive siege with like 20 units on your side, 20 units on their side. You've got orbital cannons. Uh, Fitch is adorable. And that can maybe take 30 minutes. Well, talk to us about when we can play the game. Okay. The game is due uh, this August 6th. It's going to be available on PC, multiple platforms, so consoles. Oh, wait, what's uh, this? For Super now. Neptunia oh, RPG is right. available on Nintendo Switch URL? as well. Uh, it's aow-planetfall.com. Well, I'm looking forward to it. It's less than two months away. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining thank me. Very much. Thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right. Bye bye, guys. <laughs> thank you for sharing the horrors of the future. <laughs> and for our next game, Frankie, I have to ask you. What year is it? Why, the year is 1946, Sean, my dear boy. Europe lies in ruins oh torn apart by the satanic Plan Z. What I missed? A brave band Nothing. of heroes cast the Fuhrer into hell, but little do they know, the nightmare is far from over. Akchung, this is the world exclusive reveal of the next shooter from the makers of Sniper Elite 4. Rated M for Mature. Maybe it would be good to play some more Let's Go, I don't know. Probably during Ubisoft, I'll probably play some more Let's Go. <sighs> this Wolfenstein ripoff I'm seeing on my screen? I have no idea. Yeah, okay, is this a new elite sniper thing? It fucking better not be. Left for Dead 3. <laughs> Zombie Army 4, Dead War. Oh, from the creators of Sniper Elite. You were right on that. Later on the PC yeah. Gaming Show. A love letter to classic that JRPGs. Fucking headshot What's next for war? When they did all the stories, gonna give it away. Our adventure set before, during, and after the Big Bang. Baldur's Gate three, and more. Rated M. Right. For monotony. Hundred years. The root. 
ravaged the earth. An unending assault without reason. We are victims. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna take like a break. I'll uh I'll be watching a little. Alright. Actually wait, no no no. I'm sure we can talk about something. Um Let's play a game called What Does This Game Look Like a Ripoff of? Unless you rise. Uh, bit of dark I'm thinking it looks mostly like uh, a mixture between uh, World of Warcraft and No Man's Sky. The source of death itself. Prepare yourselves. They are what do you think? Give me a bit. Oh wait, no. Let's not forget Fortnite or PUBG. Oh yeah, they gotta get a battle royale in there for some reason. You know what? I'd I'd be okay with a battle royale, royale for something like uh, uh, Remnant from the Ashes. Yeah. Steam, PS4, Xbox One. No Switch again. That's like three in a row. Joining me on the stage. Switch is remnant from the ashes. In that trailer, we got the chance to see so much new gameplay footage and new environments. Let's welcome the CEO of Gunfire Games, David Adams. Okay, um, yeah, I'll be right back. So, David, I want to ask right away for those who are unfamiliar with Remnant from the Ashes, what kind of game is it? So Remnant's a co-op action shooter set on an apocalyptic Earth and across a bunch of cool fantasy worlds. And I mean, in that trailer, we got the chance to see a huge variety of different environments. Like, what are these different places? Who's the player in this story? So as a player, you're on sort of an Odyssey-like quest to save the world. And uh, we really wanted to have a bunch of different cool locales that you go to just to experience a bunch of different stuff. And you start on Earth, but it, it rapidly changes very quickly as you get into the game. And one thing that we've you know, talked about before is that replayability is a huge focus of the game, that you could play through it 10 times and still be seeing new bosses, new monsters, new locations. How exactly does that work? Yeah, I think one of the coolest features of the game is the dynamic generation system. So we generate the maps, the enemies, the quests, NPCs, bosses, everything. You've built those all by hand, right? Yeah, it's all hand scripted, but the system takes all the pieces and stitches it together. So you might play the game and come into work and say, hey, I talked to a giant tree and fought a dragon boss, and I'd be like, I met a guy in a helicopter, an old guy in a helicopter, and killed a tree ant, and we'd have completely different experiences and, playing the same game. And you just have to keep going through and eventually explore what all the possibilities are. Yeah, you can play the game over and over again to see the stuff. You can jump into your friend's world to experience the content in their world, and that's a big part of the game, just jumping in and seeing what you get. Well, I, I want to ask about loot, which is, you know, I understand, a big part of the game. How does it function alongside this ever-shifting gameplay experience? Yeah, the loot in the game is all legendary items, and it's tied into the uh, dynamic generation. So if you fight a boss, or meet an NPC, or get a cool, unique side quest, it generally coincides with a cool, unique item. It might be a boss weapon, oh, or a magical item, or armor. So if you play the game and you get all completely different events, you'll have different equipment than I have. And in the trailer, I also saw that there were three people walking through these. You mentioned the co-op experience. How does co-op function in the world? So the game is full co-op from beginning to end. You can jump in at any point. And the game's definitely slower paced, more difficult. I mean, you will die a lot in this game. So awesome. there's a huge advantage to bringing your friends to come in there and help you take down bosses or fight off different events or just generally progress through the world. Yeah, well, I mean, as a big fan of Bloodborne and Dark Souls, I'm really looking forward to Remnant from the Ashes. What, what's the release date? Where can people go for more information? So Remnant's coming out uh, August 20th on oh, so. PC and Xbox and PS4. And if How you about that local the game sporting now, event? You can actually get in early and start playing the game August 16th. Well, awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, David Adams from Gunfire Games. Thanks so much for talking to us about Remnant. And as we mentioned earlier, keep those questions coming. I will be asking on stage the creative director of Borderlands 3 everything you want to know. Doesn't matter what platform you're on, just use hashtag PC Gaming Show. And until that time, let's talk about our next title. This one was announced two years ago at the PC Gaming Show here. It's a game from Clay Entertainment called Griftlands. It's changed quite a bit in the last two years. It's now a deck-building roguelike where you don't just fight, but you also negotiate your way through a broken-down sci-fi world. It's going to be available on the Epic Game Store in one short month on July 11th in Alpha. Let's take a look at some of the footage of what you'll be playing. Oh, 
Oh, a new card game. Yes. What's this? This looks like a mobile game. Yeah, it kind of does. This looks like a fucking mobile game ad that lies to you and is way worse in actuality. You know, you've seen those ad, you've seen those uh, fucking uh, ads before. Yeah. <clears throat> Alpha available on what? Uh, it looks like an epic, uh, epic game, game store. The game from the makers of the brilliant Exclusive. Please but not really. Which, Piers Jackson and Lisa Bowens from Frontier Which Development. means we're not missing out on anything. Yeah, I'm not missing anything. Now, Piers, okay, back to Sonic kind of Heroes. We gonna be running here? So Planet Zoo is a new management sim Look at all those Eggman's uh, robots. It involves you building and looking after... Oh yeah, Planet Zoo. Zoo. Um, you get to look after the most authentic animals we believe you've ever seen in a video game. Each of our animals are unique. They have their own needs, their own desires, and their own behaviors. They interact with each other and react with the you world see, um... and the around them. And today, for the very first time, we're really excited to we'll show everyone here a gameplay video and to announce our launch date. Well, fantastic. Let's buy the world's largest family pass and take a look inside. World premiere. Rating pending. Run your dream zoo! Well, Doug sounds excited about it. Yeah, it's like she's like, Oh, finally, an owner that can actually understand who I am! <laughs> finally, a place where I can actually be myself and not be restricted by my doggy dog world things. If, if this was on sale, I wouldn't mind getting it, because it's a sequel to Planet uh, Planet Coaster. Lisa, I love some of the animal shenanigans here. I mean, hippos pooing, yes. adorable baby elements. It's absolutely brilliant. I can't wait to play it. But yeah, if project, if hippos taking a shit is the highlight of your video, then uh, you have a terrible <laughs> conference on your hands. Going to see all the lovely, pretty animals. Yep. You go there, you want to be. <laughs> You know, learning about conservation. Uh, you want to learn about the research that they're doing. You want to be educated, and these are all things you're going to be able to do. The fucking headset is goddamn and tied with a goddamn the wrist. Is really what we take to heart. Remind me to get a new microphone after the all these conventions are done. As the most important thing to do. And Piers, when okay. can we see Yeah, because I need. I desperately need a new one. So we're I can just use the headset the part for, for whatever, whatever I need, but... Most people aren't going to be able to see that, so we've recorded our presentation. Lisa's done a fantastic mm -hmm. voiceover for it, and we'll be releasing that... Yeah, I could just do the headphones YouTube thing. Panel. That would be no that problem. ...live this Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Well, fantastic. I cannot wait to watch. <sighs> Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Here's and Lisa, everyone. <laughs> Next up, we have a very special guest all the way from Japan. Is it Miyamoto? Is that a PC show? Gaming industry legend and Shenmue creator, Yu Suzuki. Oh, Shenmue. Okay, we're finally getting Shenmue 3 shit. That is right. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> joining me on the Wait, stage Shenmue is 3 a confirmed? legend of Shenmue 3 Japanese was already coming out. Yu Suzuki. I know, that's the joke. Hello, everyone. 
In addition to being the brains behind the following games, Hang On, Space Harrier, Outrun, Afterburner, Virtual Racing, and Virtual Fighter, Yusan also created the Shenmue series, and he's here to talk about Shenmue 3 right now. Take it away, Yusan. Uh, <laughs> That's standing on the stage today. Hey, there we go. That, the mic was out for like a little bit. I just want to say thank you to the, all the fans supporting me for the long 20 years. Thank you very much. The wait. The wait is nearly over. That's right. Let's take a world exclusive look at Shenmue 3. I haven't seen gameplay of this at all, so let's take a look. Yeah, I mean, have they announced anything apart from the... Honestly, I don't it? think your Kung Fu is strong enough. Uh, Until now? I... A long time ago... It's time for the Karate Kid! <laughs> But humans are interesting creatures. Like, look, Karate Kid. Away from prying eyes and became stronger. Oh, that's what that was from. Non-Tren survived the ban and was passed on in this way. Okay, I gotta admit, it looks kind of cool. Yeah. What did you say to me? Stop it. Stop it. They That's gay. So basically the Akuza series without being Akuza. Hey, wait right there. Then I like it. Okay. Quick time event. Well, it's a Shinmu game. It has to be quick time event. Oh. Remind me to get one and two. November of this year! Yay! On PS4. So many people have been waiting for Shenmue 3. I would like to once again thank you so much. Thank you, Yusan, for joining thank us. Thank you for today. waiting. Cheers. Thank you, thank you thank for you. waiting. Hopefully, it'll be worth the wait. Now, our next title is near and dear to my childhood heart. It's based upon a game I grew up playing called Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Let's take a look at an upcoming collaboration between Coffee Stain Studios and Lava Potion. World premiere. Oh, another Coffee Stain. Oh, it's a ripoff of uh, Octopath Traveler. I mean, look at this! I was thinking more King's Quest, but okay. But with all the pixels? Oh, two hours until, uh, fucking Ubisoft. Songs of Conquest. Yeah, I'll pass. The name of the game is Songs of Conquest, and here to join me in talking I'll about be back. is the lead designer from Lava Potion, Carl Toftfeld. Hey, yeah. Carl. Hi, hey, thanks. I mean, let's just start off for anyone who maybe hasn't played the Heroes of Might and Magic series. What is Song of Conquest all about? Um, it's all about, um, well, you kind of start out with in the town that you just saw in the end of right. the trailer. And uh, from there, you recruit your wielders, is what we call our commanders. And uh, yeah. you recruit an army, and then you kind of send off your wielders on an adventure. And they go exploring yeah. the world, they pick up resources to flag mines, and with those resources, you upgrade your town so you can get more stuff, and that's kind of what you do. Adventure and strategy combined. 
Yeah, and you know, I know that part of the core loop is obviously get the resources to build up the township, but yeah. for what reason? Armies, man. Talk to me about those juicy battles. Yeah, so, so the battle, just like the whole game, is turn-based. Uh -huh. So you go into combat, you bring all your troops in, and you start by deploying them, and then all the troops have different stats, like offense and defense and health sure, and so sure. on. And they go in initiative order, and then you slug it out, and it's a bit like chess, but instead of like pawns and bishops, you have like horned ones and face spirits. Great. And yeah. Griffins and so on. Yeah, and all those things. And well, you know, as, as someone who just loves the Heroes of Might and Magic series, I know that you have translated a lot of the gameplay elements into Songs of Conquest, yeah. but what are some of the modern elements that you're bringing in? Um, well, there's a lot of it, but I mean, one of them is our magic system. We call it the essence. So basically, uh -huh. in, our, in the Songs of Conquest universe, everything has an essence within there. It's sort of like the soul. So your troops, they have an essence. And to do magic, you need to bring the troops with the right essence with your wielders. Oh, yeah. I see. So if you want to uh, like make your troops go faster, you need to bring a troop that has that essence, like cavalry. And maybe to ask a basic question. Do you know what I like children? on my pancake scratch? Ah, what, Dr. Robot? Robot head! Where can people go to get more information? Okay. And as always, Listen, I'm trying to, and I'm trying not to be bored here. Oh, it's quite a ways off. It's quite a ways off, but you can go to songsofconquest.com. Yeah, I'm Apple. just here for Terraria, so I'm tuning out everything well, else. As you know, I'm really Pretty looking much. forward to playing it, Carl. Thank you. I, I do not here. blame you at all. Like, like I played Terraria for a bit. It was okay. Now, next title is an update to a popular co-op game. Let's see what's in store for Vermin Tide 2. I thought he was going to say Terraria, and it's like, oh yeah, we can finally leave! World exclusive. World premiere. <sighs> Do I even need to ask if you've seen this already? Or at all? Is this Skyrim? That's what I thought. Alright, I'm getting my uh, dipping cup ready for uh, the meal at, during Ubisoft. Because, yeah, let's just say uh, kind of uh, tuning this out. go. Cup is ready. What are you doing here, puppy? Warhammer. I'm sorry, puppy, but uh, it's raining today, so you gotta skedaddle. Skedaddle. You just saw the reveal of the new PvP mode coming to Vermintide 2, which turns the Warhammer Fantasy cooperative game into something even more brutally competitive. It looks deliciously vile, and surely dismembering Scraven is so much more satisfying when you know you're going ham on a fellow player, making him or her cry a little bit of a rat tooth behind their computer screen. You can sign up now for the Vermintide 2 versus beta at vermintide2.com forward slash versus. Versus. In Per Astra, you're an artificial consciousness orbiting Mars, whose ultimate purpose is to terraform the planet, starting from a single drone in your landing site and turning the planet into a flourishing second home for humanity. Courtesy of developer Talon Industries and publisher War Fury, here's a first ever look at Per Astra. Mm -hmm. As we all know, reaching the red planet was not humanity's greatest achievement. Transferring the complexity of the human mind to machines was. So they can succeed where we fail. So they can build us a home on that distant, dusty rock. Today, Amy reaches Mars and begins their mission. Hi, I'm Amy Rose. Amy, are you with us? It's a better Amy than this one, I'll, I'll give you that. Of course, I'm with you, Houston. Okay, this looks like another... RTS. Yeah, probably. And now we're turning the planet into Second Earth! In the yeah, Assassin's Creed universe, our next guest sent players back in time to rewrite history. Uh oh. For his debut project with indie studio Panache Digital Games, he's going to take us back 10 million years to where humanity began. 
Here to tell us all about Ancestors is creative director and co-founder Patrice Desolet. Welcome, Patrice. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. I've been waiting 10 years yes. to come back on the big stage at E3 showing off a game. Well, it's fantastic to have you back. I just want to ask you, what is the story of human evolution? Well, when I started Panache, I needed a game, uh, uh, an open world game in which you can do a lot of things. You need a character in a 3D environment at first. And I said, oh, I'm the historical guy. I'm the historical dude. So I need an historical period. So I said, oh, let's go back at the very beginning. It'll be easier to do. Because I won't have to build a city. I won't have to build technology. And I was a bit naive. The fuck is that baby? We built Africa. Uh, I believe that's a ago. monkey. So, and that's not easy to build. It doesn't sound That looks easy. like the fucking I mean, baby from Twilight Breaking Dawn like Part 2. Well, you play our last common ancestor. Right? Of all the big apes. And then you have to explore. <clears throat> oh, don't you dare do this to me. Like, even though I wasn't interested at all. Or your, your environment. And eventually you expand your territory. You expand your clan. Because you're not playing that one badass character. You play a group of badass characters. And eventually you evolve into oh, a yes, different species. Yeah, old Gatling gun. Up until Lucy the Australopithecus for roughly two million years. Yeah, they very so good. I Why haven't they made any four, huh? Had, uh, a lot more issues to deal with than we do today. Electronic so Entertainment Expo well, extended. Well, it's all about from a prey to a predator. Basically, at the beginning of the game, everybody is there to kill you and devour you. And, 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 and devour you. It's pretty much you. You're the predator and everybody's afraid of you. And that's, that's the idea of ancestry of the humankind odyssey. So, Patrice, ultimately, what is the key to evolving your clan successfully? Curiosity. You need to explore. Because, you know, I made a game about characters and you needed to follow the story I wrote for you. This time, you're basically writing the story. Right? There's, there's no story per se inside. It's not about going and see mission givers. It's not about looking at the mini maps and the little okay, dots. Why is human the lead? You, hey, homo Humans sapiens. suck. Can you survive like our ancestors did? Look what we did to the, the question world. I'm asking the players. And be for you to answer that question August 27th. Gorillas are much better. Well, I was gonna on PC you, first. I was going to ask you when we can see it. And you answer my question first. Thank you yeah, so much, getting good at this. As Patrice says, Ancestors. Yes, will please do speed things along. Ancestorsgame.com. Thank you. Now on the Epic Game Store. We're buying up everything, so you can't. We see you have to buy, get our stuff. to play the games you want. Please tell me that's it, and we can just go home. This says this will go on for two hours. It's only been over an hour. What? I thought it's been three. It sure feels like it. Yep, just, just feels like it. Untitled Goose Game. Oh, that still hasn't gotten a title yet? <clears throat> it's gonna be called... It's gonna be fucking called titled Goose Game. <laughs> I swear to God, that's what that's what the title they're going towards. I don't know. Untitled Goose Game has a bit of a ring to it. A uh, Tom Tropics. What the golf? Oh, it might be something on Steam. And one more thing.
What is this? Chess? No, this is another... This is like one of those free-to-play games. Auto chess. Please welcome to the stage, Loring Lee, founder and CEO of Dragon Nest. Indeed, auto chess has turned out to be a sensation with hundreds of thousands, millions of players getting a taste of it and here to talk about it's coming to PC is yeah. Loring Lee. Take it away, Loring. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Loring Lee. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I'm the CEO and the founder of Dragon Nest Game. Dragon Nest Game is a game developer and a publisher comes from China. I'm so happy to be here today on this stage to introduce our game, Auto Chess, to all of you. This is really an exciting moment for us. As the trailer says, this is a real engaging game of Auto Chess. Dragon Nest now is working with the creator of Auto Chess, Joe Studio. Uh, we are working together to bring auto chess to a world, both on PC and uh, mobile, so that everyone from anywhere with any device can enjoy the same fun of auto chess. Now, we are building the PC version with, uh, by using the uh, game engine of <coughs> Unreal Engine 4. As everyone knows, Unreal Engine is one of the best game engines of the world. With the, help, with the help of Apex Games and uh, by the power of uh, Unreal, I believe we can finish our job quickly and efficiently. And uh, today, I'm very glad to announce the PC still talking about that chess game? Chess will be coming to the Epic Games Store. I look forward. Uh, yeah. I look forward to all of you playing auto chess on PC later this year. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Loring Lee. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thanks so much for yeah. sharing the news with us. Once again, Auto Chess, if you have not played it, you must check it out. It is so fun. Our next title with Frankie up above, I understand is an inspired yeah. indie game. We'll find out, Sean, because one of the things we love about PC gaming is the way that game creators from all over the world can draw inspiration from one another's work. Chris Charles is a great example of that, a gorgeous indie love letter to classic JRPGs developed by a team in Colombia. Chris Taylor's spin on the genre brings a unique perspective that lets you see the past, present, and future on one screen at the same time. So you'll see the future change based on your decisions in real time. Here's the world exclusive reveal of Chris Taylor's. <laughs> If you saw what was, what is, and what would be. If you knew how it ends, uh, would you let's... change it? Could you make the hard decisions? Yeah. And would you be strong enough to fight? The hell is this? I have no idea. Looks cool though. If you learn from the past and act in the present, you can rewrite the future. Chris Tales. De debut demo is now on Steam. Okay, cool. In peace well, that's gaming. a big gun. It's not the size of your weapon, it's how you use it. And I'm holding one of the, well, well quite frankly, it's, it's a bit average, isn't it? It's just your average, you know, Glock, really. No, it's one of the ridiculous alien weapons from our next game, Valfaris. A brutal, heavy metal-infused 2G action platformer inspired by true old-school classics like Concha and Torrican. Assuming the role of fearless Warrotherium, Players must blast and slash their way through the doomed citadel of Balfaris, overcoming its deadly environments and enemies before challenging the arcane evil at its very heart. 
Get ready to rip the galaxy and you wormhole. From publisher Big Sugar, this is the forest. Oh, there's a pretty bad echo. All of a sudden. <clears throat> really? Meanwhile, we got... Gontra? Mixed with, uh... Metroid. That was That's right. incredible action in the Valporis trailer. I'm very excited for our next guest. In case you have not been in downtown LA, E3 is covered with Hello Borderlands there. 3 art. It's amazing, it's beautiful. And joining me is the amazing and beautiful Paul Sage, creative director <laughs> of Borderlands 3. Beautiful's a new one, thanks. Yeah, there you go, Don't Paul. worry, you Welcome. haven't missed much. I mean, there's been so much yeah, not really. around Borderlands 3. What's the stuff you're really excited about? I think we're on Borderlands 3 now. Oh man, so you know, we've talked about our vault hunters. Well, this time we get to talk about Moe's. And she is our uh, gunner vault hunter, so yeah. she has a big mech, so it's one of the things. All about loot, we're talking about, you know, the different loot, such as shields, grenades, those yeah. things, going to different planets, so a lot of stuff to talk about. Well, I mean, I want to start right off with Moe's. Tell us everything you can about her. Okay, yes, yeah, so I'll tell you everything I can. So Moe's, again, like I said, she's a mech pilot. She has this big mech, it's called Iron Bear. She gets into Iron Bear. Yeah. You know, we have multiple action skills, which means that she can equip either a minigun or a railgun or a flamethrower. You know, if you want to barbecue your enemy, something like that. So, oh, nice. You know, uh, yeah, Moe's is a, a terrifically fun character for us right now. Now, we've been excited to be collating a whole bunch of community questions. We're going to break them into two categories. First, there's a whole bunch of repeat questions that I want to make sure we get to right now. One of the big categories is about loot, because you've mentioned having a billion guns earlier, but what can you tell us about some of the other gear, the other progression systems right. in the game? Yeah, so uh, you, let's talk about grenades, like one of my favorite things that we don't get to talk about a lot. So in the past, we've had grenades, if they've had yeah. like one thing, they can yeah, bounce, going they can stick gunner. to different oh, things. Oh, look, there are the other ones. Yeah. This time, we're combining like all of those things. So for instance, the other day I was playing, and I threw a grenade, and that grenade had a bounce, it would stick, an explosion would come out, and the grenade would fire guns as it was going through, right? So we have like a ton of different <laughs> grenades that, that are in there. shield where if you duck that shield will extend out in front of you you know so oh, just, just tons of different things that we have you know, with our characters class mods class mods are unique and that they give you skills this time as well as enhancing the skills you currently have I, I also remember earlier you mentioned about artifacts what are those so artifacts are you know we, we've kind of concentrated on like hey does the game feel fluid? Can I, you know, slide into things? Can I jump? Can I mantle? Right, right, right. So when we were playing with that, we had, we slid into a barrel, right? And the barrel exploded, and we're like, well, that's kind of fun. Yeah. So why don't we do something like that? So our artifacts actually add certain things to movement. So for instance, you can slide faster. You can slide, and every time you slide, there's an explosion. We have something we call, we call. A second category of questions unrelated to second category okay, of questions unrelated to loot. Well, there's going to be a single player campaign. What's going to be happening after the campaign? What are some of the beyond the single player, maybe end game content that you can talk about? All right, end game content. Okay, well, it's E3, so I give a little bit. So we have this Great. thing where we call the Guardian system. Okay, so for those of you who played Borderlands before, you might remember badass ranks. Badass ranks, you can get, you know, it's basically was kind my of chat the thing off? system that added to your stats. Yeah. We doubled down on that. We have what we call Guardian ranks. And Guardian ranks not only like a has that duck. infinite progression, but it has skills in different skins that you can open up as you go through. And the All right, I'm going to lower the like Can I pet it? Every character that you I'm going to lower the volume. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to lower my volume. Oh, Tell me if you, if that affects it. All right, it. last category we're going to go through, and then we're going to hit some rapid-fire questions. How do the boss fights in Borderlands 3 compare to Borderlands 1 and 2? I know those were big aspects. What? How do you build Hello? that? Hello? Right, so I think of a boss fight, you know, like I I, I'm an old-school Nintendo Oh, really? Player, so what the I hell is this chat thing for anyway? Like oh, yeah. Phases and stuff like that. So now those people, you know, smart people in the audience know that we've talked about going to vaults instead of vault. 
right? And so there are right, different, right. like, huge boss encounters there uh, that are yeah. just, you know, multi-phase boss encounters. We have, like, a lot of different mini-bosses throughout the game, so a lot of different boss encounters throughout the game. Well, now I want to ask some really quick questions that should be yes or no, very brief. First, from Castoray. How will you be handling multiplayer? Um, multiplayer, we will basically be allowing anybody to jump in at any time, so... Awesome. If you put all the other primates animations. together, they win. Can I pet the Therefore, gun? Therefore, humans are the Great worst question. primate. I'm not here to judge what you do with your gun, so you know, you, that's a personal question. All right, great. <laughs> Sam Wiseman asks, is Maya's new companion a siren? People are asking the right questions. That's what I will say about that. Oh, you tease. Yeah, sorry. All right, from Ironic Sanguine says, is Tiny Tina going to be seen fighting alongside the Vault Hunters? Yes. Nice. All right, I'm just going to blast through a couple more as fast as I possibly can. Right. Uh, what's the level cap at launch? 50. Will we get to see Flak? Yes. Will we see golden keys and or shift codes for Borderlands 3? Absolutely. Will there be duels? Yes. Other kinds of PvP? Mm, yes and no. <laughs> and also maybe. And Perfect. Maybe, yeah. And will you be able to transfer weapons between your characters? Absolutely, right from the start. Perfect. And when is the damn game coming out? Friday the 13th, 2019, September 13th. Perfect. Press Borderlands.com for more information. Thanks so much for joining me on stage. Sean, thank Bye. you. And once again, if you have not seen all the setups in downtown for Borderlands 3, oh, they're beautiful. Our next game, we're going to be revisiting a guest that we saw earlier in the show. He's upstairs with Frankie. What you got for us? Oh, oh. there's a shark. Oh, hi, we're, we're live. Sorry. Hello. Oh, I was yeah. just, uh, yeah, I was actually testing out my outfit for this weekend. I don't know. What do you think, John? I, I think you look really sharp, as always. Very sharp. Well, thank you so much. John Gibson, president of Tripwire, thank you for joining us again on the show. Yeah, I'm very, very to be busy here. man. Yes. Yes. Now, last year, we revealed Man Eater to the world. And can you right. remind anyone? who missed it, what the game's all about. Absolutely. Maneater is an open world action RPG, or shark PG as we call it. You start as a, a small baby shark pup, and you have to survive in this harsh world and try to eat your way to the top of the ecosystem. The three words that we think sum the game up the best are eat, explore, and evolve. And uh, we also have someone we'd like you to meet. Well, let's meet him then. Let's take a look at the new trailer. Nom. Closer with that camera, we two gonna toss it. Man eater. John, who was that appallingly dressed fisherman in the trailer? Because quite frankly, not even I would eat him. <laughs> that was Scaly Pete. And Scaly Pete's the villain in this tale. Sk Pete is uh, is a best fisherman in the Gulf, the best shark fisherman, or he'll tell you he's the best shark fisherman. And uh, he disfigures our baby shark at the beginning of the game and does some really nasty things. So he's not a very nice guy. And now the story of Maneater is told uh, through the lens of a reality show called Shark Hunters vs. Maneaters. And it follows Pete and uh, the player shark Love on shark. its adventures. And uh, you know it's it's a really you know it's it's, it's a very exciting way uh, way to tell a story. And based on that trailer, to be honest, John, it looks like your main goal as a shark is to just bite everything. Yeah, there is there is an awful lot of man eating going on in this game. That is the name of the game. And uh, but we like to think of the game as a shark tastic fun action game. It's like GTA if you were a shark. Um, but there's. 
if GTA, there is but more to the game than just eating. So uh, we spent a lot of time making, moving through the water, breaching out, and, uh, and adding abilities to go up on the beach for an afternoon snack. Um, so uh, there's, there's a, a lot of exciting things that you can do in the game. And you mentioned before, it's a shark PG. How does that progression system work? So there's three facets to, to the shark PG elements of the game. Uh, there's growth, there's shark life phases, PG. and there's evolutions. So growth uh, comes about through eating things, nutrients, people, whatever you can find. And that's kind of like your XP in the game. That allows you to level up, your shark will grow a little bit, you'll get more powerful. And then at key phases uh, that we call life phases, you'll, you'll, you'll make a big jump. So let's say you're a, a brooding teenage shark and you're about to become an adult. When you become an adult, you take a big leap in size, a big leap in uh, power and capability. And then as you reach these life phases, you unlock evolutions that can be applied to parts of the shark's body. For example, you could get metallic teeth that allow you to shred boats, or a powerful tail that allows you to jump to incredible heights, or you could get mutated lungs that allow you to spend a little more time on the beach getting those afternoon snacks. Just really quickly, John, everyone's wanting to know this question. When's it coming out? Oh, so we're really hard hammerheading away at this game uh, and trying to make it the most awesome shark RPG ever. Um, we do not ready to announce a date, but we're pretty certain you're going to see it before the next PC gaming show. Well, I hope we do, John. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start biting people. In fact, I'm quite hungry at the moment, so I think actually I'm going to find an audience member because you guys look tasty. So I'll see you in a bit. I'm just going to have a snack. Thank you, John. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And uh, chair. Wait a minute. Wait a sec. Is that my chair? Nope, nope. That's not my chair. I have a similar chair, though. And they're showing for the chair. I have a similar chair. A better chair, probably. You know, one of the absolute best parts about being sponsored by oh, I went no, to get to sit for this next segment and talk to you about Terraria. Terraria is one of the best-selling PC games of all time, selling almost 30 million copies. And part of the reason why it's maintained such popularity is the fact that the developers Relogic continue to add content, going from 250 items at release to now over 4,000. Let's take a look at their penultimate expansion penultimate. coming up: Terraria Journey's End. What's happening? Terraria is happening. Is it a big well, update? No, it's a big update. The next title that we're going to be looking at is a game that is the spiritual successor to her story. It's called Telling Lies by... Well, well, that was all we got. Okay, now, I'm, if, in. I'm out. If you haven't played what do you mean? her story, you totally should. It's fantastic. I, I got what know. I came here for. It is a game okay, where come on, you can't you stay for the rest of it? ...video in order to right, find what happened with a murder. What? What is it that's going on in Telling Lies? What's the premise? So, uh, like her story, Telling Lies is a game in which you watch video footage to piece together a story. And this time, we have a woman who has stolen an NSA hard drive, which contains secretly recorded intimate and private conversations between our four characters. Something has gone terribly wrong, and it's up to you to figure out what and why. It's time to take a look at some of the gameplay mechanics and see Telling Lies in action. Let's take a look. Once upon 
upon a time. It's late. I got In the magical you. land of Equestria. I don't love you and I don't miss you. <sighs> you already know too much. You know too much. It's late. I gotta get her in the bath. Love you. Love you. I've only ever been in love once. Uh, it was with a girl I met when I was 18, but I was too young and naive to handle it properly. Okay, yeah, I've got to do something now. For, oh, you gotta go? Which makes me a yeah, I'm out. Alright, uh, later. Or underdeveloped emotionally. I'm a loyal friend. Yeah, I don't blame him. And it's still around 30 more minutes of this. Probably, yeah. Oh, Sam, I got some questions for you about what we've just seen. Let, I mean, talk to me about the mechanics. I mean, I saw, you know, the subtitles up, highlighting, and it was loading more video footage. What's going on? So what we do in Telling Lies is we take all of the exploration you would have in a normal video game. So all that walking around in a 3D world. Yeah. And we apply that directly to the story, to the footage itself. So you're going to be scrubbing around in these clips, paying close attention, and you're going to be picking up on the subtext, listening to names, people, places. And with that information, you're going to use that to find more clips, dig into those, See. and over time, kind of build up this picture of the story. And it's, it's truly like an open world video game. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of times with open world video games, they talk about you know, the square kilometer edge or miles in America. Um, what's the sort of scope that we're talking about? Like, how many hours of footage mm -hmm. is there? So we got, like, over 10 hours of footage here. Wow, so it, really? It's a story that encompasses, like, two years. What I wanted to do with this one was, like I say, really embrace this idea of it being an open world game. You're free to explore and follow your curiosity. Just lose yourself in this story, yeah. all the characters. It's this huge, messy, colorful story that we're trying to tell. Well, I'm curious, Logan, as a, as a performer in this kind of game, what is it like to actually try to have all the layers in there for each performance, also not knowing when a player is going to be seeing the specific footage you're performing? Well, it's definitely a non-linear uh, open world game, but our approach and Sam's approach was um, not unlike a movie or a TV show, and we had to understand it a to B. And so, for the most part, that's how we shot it. Obviously, when you're shooting a movie or a TV show, yeah. um, and in this case, a game, you're going to be shooting out of, out of order. But we actually stayed pretty linear in how we approached the story. We, we went after it like uh, all the other times we're actors. We just went after intention yeah, yeah. And, and what do we want. And, and, um, and we tried to make it as deep. Um, <sighs> you know, it's got a lot of scope. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to, to make it as deep as possible, and Sam is one of the best uh, movie or TV directors I've worked with. So it was, uh, uh, so this guy. Nice. Yeah, look, look at you two. Now, of course, I do want to stress to any of you, if you have not played Her Story, it's quick to play through. It's absolutely brilliant. Please check it out in the meantime. But we're, of course, waiting to find out when can we play Telling Lies. Very soon. Very soon. Promise. We'll have a date soon. Right now, you can go to Steam. You can wishlist on Steam. We all love Steam. Um, and yeah. Very soon, we'll be showing a little bit more during E3, and uh, the game will be out. Yeah, very soon. Fantastic. Desperate to get it out there. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as humanly possible. Yeah. Well, Sam Logan, thanks so much for joining me on stage. Once again, telling lies. <laughs> now, up on the balcony, Frankie's going to be talking to us about a game that my friends, year <laughs> after year after year, keep telling me I have to play because of how much they've improved it. Frankie, what's going on with Warframe? Well. One of my favorite parts of last year's show, aside from being upstage by a giant duck, was getting a glimpse at the future of Warframe. And here with the latest look at the next expansion to the universe is Space Mum Rebecca Ford. So, chat, behave yourselves, please, because Mother's here. Now, Rebecca, what are we about to see? Uh, we're going to take a look at an amazing trailer that our team has put together. Uh, a lot of our players have been waiting a year for a look at what we've been calling Railjack, so it's about time to, you know, see what we've been doing. Yeah, let's take a look.
Oh, it's not even a full reveal. Wow. Fuck you. I know. Rebecca, it must be so exciting to know that the fans have finally seen it. And you're clearly going all in on the epic space combat. So tell me about the new stuff that players yeah. are going to be able to experience. I wasn't shaking before we started talking, and now I am because it's real. Because, you know, Empyrean is what we're calling Codename Railjack. It's basically taking the space ninja part of Warframe, sending it back up to space, bringing players that squad gameplay they know, taking the enemies like the Corpus and the Grenier, giving them their own Railjack to you know, essentially explore the solar system with and take down the bad guys. And when are fans going to get to see more? Well, uh, TennoCon is in London, Ontario. It's July 6th, and you can come uh, watch it online on Twitch. We're going to be showing a lot more in our keynote for uh, what Empyrean is going to be. Well, today I'm getting a feel for the suit. So uh, what's the deal with that sweet-looking Necros Prime? How do I get my Tenno arms into it? I cannot say that on live television, but, uh, you know, there, there are ways. But, yeah, you just have to watch, link your Warframe account to your Twitch account. If you watch 30 minutes of our Tenno Live show, you can get it. But hopefully you stay for the whole hour, because we got lots to show. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca. And good luck with TennoCon on July 6th. Thank you. Okay, now we've seen some amazing stuff today, but nothing quite so gloriously strange as our next game. Developed by Brooklyn-based studio Feral Cat Den, it's an existential space jazz odyssey set during the Big Bang. Yeah, it's actually uh, blown my mind learning about this one. Buckle up, everyone, because we're about to get bonkers with Genesis Noir. Genesis Noir, just beautiful, stylish art. The next game we're gonna take a look at is the twist on the stealth genre. It's called El Ijo, where you play as a six-year-old trying to escape a monastery and find your mother, mother using toys and tricks to avoid monks. Let's oh, take a look do you at mean this Home Alone? Getty Western-inspired project from Studio Handy Games. <laughs> Masita. Eddie John. 
El Ijo, once again, is the title of the trailer we just saw. For our final guest tonight, please. Oh, final! Welcome Thank in. God. From Larian Studios, CEO Sven Vinke, and from uh, Dungeons and Dragons at Wizards of the Coast, the creative director of Dungeons and Dragons, Mike Merles, to talk about Baldur's Gate Three. <laughs> Yeah. Fucking finally, we're almost done. Now, this was only just recently announced. How did this partnership come about? Uh, we went to see Wizards of the Coast at the end of uh, Divinity Original Sin 1. Yeah. That was back in 2014. And I tried to convince them back then that they should give us the Baldur's Gate 3 license. And they said, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, but we had a long chat about yeah. um, what the vision would be for the game. And then uh, we kept on bumping into each other. And then uh, suddenly in uh, 2016, I get a phone call from Nathan Stewart, who's the big boss of Mike and the head of Dungeons and Dragons. He said, yeah. you need to come to Seattle right away. And we're gonna have dinner in a very shady restaurant. And he had this big stack of paper <laughs> with him. And on it was Baldur's Gate 3. And in it was pretty much everything that we talked about. And he says, I'm gonna wow. present this to my board. Do you still wanna do it? <laughs> I don't want to do it. Uh, and then a couple of weeks later, we started negotiating, and here we are. I mean, what does the Baldur's Gate franchise mean to you, Mike? Oh, to me, it's the crown jewel of D and D uh, computer games, right? I mean, for me personally, Baldur's Gate, the original one, was the ch finally I had the chance to actually play a D and D campaign rather yeah. than having to run them for all my friends. So it just it means so much to us. Baldur's Gate, it's you know such fantastic storytelling, and it's so exciting to see it come to a, not only a new generation of gamers. Yeah. But for the gamers who remember the 20 years it's been since the right. original, the first two in the series. So it's incredibly exciting. And for us, it really is. It's such an important part of the yeah. mythos as a whole. And we, we got a chance to see the trailer. Talk to me about some of the story elements, the world elements. What are things we're going to see in Baldur's Gate 3? Well, we're only talking about what's in the trailer right now. But uh, obviously, you're going to go to the city, because we start with the city. Uh, you start outside of the city, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be mind flayers. Uh, they're very nasty. Uh, wow, you are seeing awesome in the trailer the process of ceremonies, as we, we call it. Uh, yeah, it's accelerated, so that's not right. Yeah. Blow out your uh, ass! You're going to see a lot of iconic creatures, iconic characters, iconic places. Listen, I'm trying to get good gaming references in here. some of the gameplay elements, because obviously, you know, there's just been a big resurgence of Dungeons & Dragons, tons of broadcasts on Twitch. It's been a while since I've seen um, you. What game you hit me with? Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle? Can't wait to play this. Into, you know, what has to ah! be a computer game. So what was that? Player handbook, which is basic, basic rule set of Dungeons uh, and Dragons. Which player handbook? Which uh, edition? Yeah, yeah, play the game, yeah. Doc. So I'm not playing this shit. To the video game. Come on, stick it in Nintendo. Well. How about I stick it up your rabbit hole? Made for uh, uh, tabletop gaming. And uh, so we started modifying those things. And then we had to add things on top of it. Because yeah. uh, if you play tabletop, you have a game master. And you say, well, I want to do this. Yeah. And then the game I want to start a fight with a pigeon. And he's like, OK, roll yeah, for that. Sure. Exactly. Do, 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 do. So we had to add systems to make that possible within the game. But we've, been, we've gone very, very far. Yeah, I mean, can you give an example of like a crazy moment that a player might do that you could actually play out in the game? Uh, well, I could, let's say that we get into a fight. Because you ask a nasty question, I don't want to answer it. <laughs> and uh, I take the chair over there, I put it on fire, smash it on your head. Uh, well, just as an example. It's just an example. This is fine. We're just talking. We're just uh, talking. These are things that we have to put systems into the game for to, to do it, which are not necessarily going to be described inside of the book. Interesting. And, and I mean, like, Mike, in terms of your role yes. seeing the Larian mm. Studios, you have tons of. I got to admit, that actually sounds players, interesting. What's the sort of information that you provide in a sense? Yeah. Well, like, really like uh, think about it, is, flaming is, chair is, throw you know, over someone. Dungeons and Dragons, the universe of D&D, &D, uh, <laughs> it's like a, a toy box for dungeon right. masters and players to go into and build their own stories. So working with okay, fine. working with Ven, a lot of it was just Fine, up Baldur's Gate 3 will be added to the list. You guy, happy now? You know, like, I remember w w one of our first meetings, we just laid out a map of Baldur's Gate and the Sword Coast and asking a lot of questions like, what kind of story uh, do you want I to cast play? Magic what Missile! Do what locations we always wanted to put in a game like this? And then for the, in terms of the system support, you know, what, what does it mean in terms of the story for each character, for, e for each character race, each character class, so that if, you know, if, if you have your favorite class and it's in the game, you really feel like you're taking on that role that you love so much from the tabletop. Yeah. It's really coming to life in an authentic way in Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> and we're going to talk in a moment about, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 release dates and whatnot, but we have a second game that we want to talk about and on a new technology known as pencil and paper. I understand that there is a tabletop prequel coming for Baldur's Gate. Exactly. So in Baldur's Gate, we think there's one saga, 
all the different games coming together to yeah. tell one grand story of the city. So uh, on September 17th, we're releasing our next tabletop campaign, uh, Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus, and it is the next chapter in the Baldur's Gate saga, right. and it's a prequel to Baldur's Gate 3. So if you haven't played a Baldur's Gate game since Baldur's Gate 1 or 2, this is your chance to check out on the history. It's been about 100 years since the events of Baldur's Gate 2. Yeah. So this will give you a chance to check in on the city, to see what's going on, its current state, who the movers and shakers are. We also feature a complete levels 1 to 13 campaign that takes you from the mean streets wow. of Baldur's Gate to the depths of hell itself. And sort of pose to the players yeah. a question, do you, do you want to redeem Baldur's Gate or send it to damnation? So we're putting that right in players' hands to make that choice. Well, I have to ask Sven, it's a question on a lot of people's minds. What can you talk to us about expected release time frames? So people have been waiting for it for a long time. Yeah. They're going to have to wait a little bit more uh, when it's ready. Uh, so uh, we don't, we, this is the game that we want to play, so we want to make sure it's really, yeah. really good. And then when, when that's the case, then we'll release it. Well, I know a lot of people have been waiting a long time. And I think I speak for a lot of people here when I say, take your time. If the Divinity thank Original you. Sin games are any indication of the quality, it's going to be fantastic and worth the wait. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me thank on stage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ben and Mike talking about Baldur's Gate 3. Goodbye. Goodbye, guys. Why are they leaving? Well, it's because the PC gaming show has officially concluded. Let's bring up on the stage the fantastic Frankie Ward. Come here, Frankie. Hello. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Thank oh, so it's over? Hasn't this audience been absolutely fantastic today? Is it finally over? Guys, thank you so much for coming out to the fifth annual PC gaming Fuck show. Fuck you. Okay, we're done. Um, one, uh, no, two out of ten. Worse than the Bethesda <laughs> conference. That's all I really have to say about all that shit. Yeah, it wasn't really good. All right, now if you'll excuse me, uh, I'm gonna bring up the Ubisoft one really quick. Well, uh, hold on. Okay. There should be one that is... Here we go. The pre-show is in like 10 or whatever minutes. Okay, so... All right. Long story short, uh, PC gaming show was shit. Um, I'm pretty sure Mad would say that his uh, highlights would be uh, Terraria, and that's about it. Um, my highlights would be uh, the Chris Tales, the Maneater, and um, Baldur's Gate 3, I guess. But that's really about it. Not really much else left to it. Uh, two out of ten. Hopefully Ubisoft will at least be a little more interesting. Uh, this is Block Six, and I gotta go get my food. Okay. That's Fan, and that's Flash. Let's go. Bye bye. I left the call. I didn't stop the recording. Yeah. There we go. There's the mess up of today. All right, this is Blah Six. Yeah, fan. And Flash is here somewhere. And he'll pop up. Flashy dooby doo. Uh, aren't you surprised that people stay? I think maybe they're just they've spent their money. But they what don't about, have any place to go for two hours. Yes, but I would say this. When you talk about robbing your life, see, my thing I've always wanted to say to the people, I've always wanted to stand up in the middle of a bad movie in a uh -huh. theater and say, aren't your lives worth more for two hours than the, even, say, seven bucks in New York uh, City? No standard. Three fifty an hour. Every, that's below the minimum wage, the new minimum wage. I mean, <laughs> get out and live. Go stand in the lobby and talk. Yeah. You know? Oscar Brotman, a Chicago film exhibitor, once told me many years ago, he said, there's a rule. He said, if nothing has happened by the end of the first reel, nothing <laughs> is going to happen. Yeah. You know? And when I saw uh, this movie, I oh, knew it was... that I, after the first minute, I knew that nothing yeah, was going to happen. Basic errors.